Hi guys, I hope you're all doing really well. I'm back today with a brand new book. Um, I know we've read fiction stories in the past, so today I'm going to change it up a little bit and we're going to read a short extract from a non-fiction book because it's good to get a different feel of the different types of text and language used in the world around us, okay? So before I begin, I would like you to have a think about what is a non-fiction text. What do you think is a non-fiction text? I'll give you one minute to have a little think. Um, so maybe think about its purpose, the way it's written. Is it written in a very formal or informal style? And what kind of features would we expect to find in a non-fiction text? Yeah, I'll give you about a couple of minutes to maybe have a think, discuss with your family and friends, and then we'll get straight into it. Okay? Okay. So a non-fiction text is meant to inform or educate us about a certain topic. So, for example, today's book is called I Wonder Why the Sea is Salty. OK, so I know from the title of this book that it's going to tell us some factual information about the sea or the oceans. OK, and maybe things that we would expect to find inside it. OK. Now, if I open up the book, I am immediately met with a contents page. So hopefully you can all see that. OK, so the contents page tells us the relevant, all the relevant topics that we would expect to find in this book. So, for example, if I wanted to learn about what is the biggest fish, I know I need to go to page 24. OK. So let's quickly go to page 24 and find out what is the biggest fish. Right, so here it says, the biggest fish is the whale shark. Okay, it is as heavy as six large elephants. All right, so it gives you some additional piece of factual information to educate us. Right, it also, at the back of the book, you will find an index page. These tend to be very common in non-fiction texts, so these help us to quickly find what we're searching for. So if I wanted to look up the famous pirate Blackbeard, I'd know I need to go to page 8. OK? Right, so putting on your best listening ears now, because I'm going to be reading us a short extract and then asking some questions at the end. OK? How big is the ocean? The ocean is truly enormous. It covers more than twice as much as the earth as land does. In fact, it's made up of five oceans. The Pacific, the Atlantic, the Antarctic, the Indian Ocean and the Arctic Ocean. OK, so the Arctic Ocean is near the North Pole and the Antarctic Ocean is by the South Pole. Although these all have different names, they flow into each other to make one huge world ocean. Don't go for a swim in the Arctic Ocean. It is the coldest of the oceans and it is uh, because it's covered in ice for most of the year. Which is the biggest ocean? <clears throat> the Pacific is by far the biggest ocean in the world. It's larger than all the other oceans put together and it's also much deeper. If you look at a globe you'll see that the Pacific Ocean reaches halfway round the world. What's the difference between a sea and an ocean? People often use the word sea and ocean to mean the same thing. That's fine but to a scientist they are different things. The seas are just part of an ocean, the parts that are the nearest to the land. Okay, so seas are the parts that are the nearest to the land. So the Mediterranean Sea is between Africa and Europe, for example. Okay, so I've got to show you a picture. There you go, so you've got the different oceans. Okay. Right, why is the sea salty? Sea water tastes salty because it has salt in it. The salt is the same as the stuff people sprinkle on their food. Most of it comes from rocks from the land. Rain washes the salt into rivers which carry it into the sea. 
Most of the Earth's water is salty. Only a tiny part is fresh water that we can drink. Some of the sea salt we use comes from hot places such as India. People build low walls to trap more seawater when the tide comes in. When the sun dries up the water, the salt is left behind. Okay, so some of you will know that from science that the sun evaporates the water and then the salt is left behind. Okay. Some beaches around the Black Sea are covered with covered with rich dark mud. People slap it all over themselves. It's meant to be good for the skin. Is the Red Sea really red? So for those of you that don't know, the Red Sea is a long river that crosses all the way through Africa. So it crosses um, in parts like Egypt or Saudi Arabia as well, for example. Okay. Parts of the Red Sea look red. In summer, millions of tiny red algae plants grow in the water. Don't worry, you won't turn pink if you swim there. Okay. So here's a picture to show how people collect the salt. Okay, so they create low levels of land that trap the water. The water is evaporated or is dried up by the sun, which leaves the salt behind. Okay. What did sailors fear the most? So very quickly, sailors are people that travelled around the world in boats or, la or ships. Okay. In olden days, sailors had to put up with bad food, fearful storms and pirate attacks. Pirates roamed the high seas on the lookout for merchant ships loaded with fine goods and treasures. When the pirates found a ship, they boarded it, attacked the crew and carried off all the valuable goodies. Blackbeard was one of the nastiest pirates. To look extra fierce, he used to thread rope through his beard and then set it on fire. Real pirates didn't actually make people walk the plank, but the pirates you read about in stories and the pirates that we see in movies often do. There weren't many women pirates. Anne Bonny and Mary Red are two of the most famous. They disguised themselves as men. Who first sailed round the world? In 1519, a fleet of five ships set off from Spain to sail around the world. Their captain, Ferdinand Magellan, was killed on the way. Just one ship and 18 men completed the journey. It had taken three years. Times were tough for Magellan's men. When their food ran out, they had to eat grilled leather. Not very nice. There's another picture to show you. Okay. Right, question time now. So the first question I have for you is can you name all five oceans can you name all five oceans if you said the arctic the antarctic the atlantic the pacific and the indian ocean you are correct well done and well done even if you manage to get at least three of those okay well done Right, the next question is, which is the coldest ocean? Which is the coldest ocean? Okay, if you said the Arctic Ocean or the ocean um, at the North Pole, that is absolutely correct. Well done. It is the coldest ocean because it is covered in ice. Okay. Okay, the next question I have is, <clears throat> what makes the sea salty? What makes the sea salty? The answer is it has salt in it. <laughs> well done if you got that. Right, the next question is what makes the Red Sea red? What makes the Red Sea red? Okay, if you said tiny plants called algae, then you are correct. Well done. Okay, next question. What did the famous pirate, what did the famous pirate, Blackbeard, used to do to make himself look fierce? What did he used to do to make himself look fierce? Okay, if you said he put some throat, um, throat, 
you put some rope through his beard and then set it on fire you are correct well done the last question i have is who first set sail around the world okay who first set sail around the world if you said Ferdinand Magellan and his crew set sail around the world well done they were the first and they set off in 1519 so if you got that give yourself a bonus point well done okay right guys that is the end I really hope you enjoyed that short little story um, I've got a short task for you now and that's quite easy it's basically to read a short non-fiction text so you can try and find some on the internet like a short online article maybe about something you're interested in okay so you can find out about the sea the land an animal for example okay so read through it and then I would like you to tell me some facts that you found from your non-fiction text have a look as well if you can identify any features so does it have a contents page does it have an index page yeah look at the way it's written is it written in a very formal and educational style okay right until then take care and i look forward to seeing you all soon bye bye